the Bampton's Rated R podcast for all your bacon needs. And in three, two, one. And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Rated R Show. As usual, my name is Christian, but you can call me G. And with me, I think I have the Yo Jolly Roger. Yo, what's up? Yeah, Bam was supposed to be here. Couldn't make it. I filled in. America, what's up? So you're basically saying you're our backup South African. I wouldn't put it that way, but I kind of did put it that way. Oh, anyway, what's going on? Nothing much. It's Saturday. We're recording. The weather's nice here. And, you know, just looking at the news. Yeah, weather's pretty good here, too. I think we're between hurricanes. We're between, like, the uh, the Maria, Irma, Jose, Juan Pablo. I don't know what's, which one's next. But it's good here, too. You have internet. That's all that matters right now. Yeah, the power's on. Internet's flowing. Uh, well, that's good, because... I've been looking at some newsy bits and you know what, it's been a while since we looked at TV shows and what's coming up. And October really is the month where all the TV series are released or they're just coming back for yet another season. So I figured just, you know, just to look briefly at them and, um, well, one that I've been waiting for impatiently, Star Trek Discovery. It's coming out, well, I said we're recording Saturday. So it's launching tomorrow, the Sunday 24th, on some TV channel called CBS. Star Trek, it's it's still around. Like, they're still discovering stuff. How long have they been around? They, they, they should have discovered it all by now. Oh man, that goes back a long time. But this would be a... What is it? This is a prequel to the... This is set after the Star Trek Enterprise, but before... The original Star Trek and before the Jar Jar universe Star Trek. So at this point, they haven't really discovered anything, I guess? Okay, so they did discover everything originally, and now they're just going before they actually discovered it. I was going to say, they're not very good at discovering if it's taking them this long. Well, let's uh, let's look at it. Um, Next Generation and DS9 takes place in the Alpha Quadrant, so that's one quarter of the galaxy. And why did it take place in Delta? which is across from us on the other side of the center of our galaxy. So they looked at a quarter. They're still, you know, two quarters, half the galaxy. They haven't looked at yet, so there's a lot to discover. But that's just one team, man. Isn't there multiple teams out there in space? They didn't just send one ship. Well, it looks like um, space is really big, so it takes time to get anywhere. I don't know what you're talking about. Nope. But yeah, Star Trek. Yeah, I never really got into that show. Like... They've had some bad acting on there. They've had some, like, world firsts on there, but it really got into the show itself. Oh, they've had great acting and bad acting and great scripts and bad scripts. and Ooh, there's some crappy stuff out there in the Star Trek universe. Some of it almost as bad as Star Wars. What are you talking about? I actually watched some Star Wars movies. Like, uh, I like the movie. The movies are nice. I'd rather watch a movie than a TV show of bad actors. Yeah. Nah, I'm on the Star Trek side. But I like that this one is finally coming out, because the last we had was Enterprise. That would be, what, 15 years ago or something like that? So it's been a while. But yeah, Star Trek's had all kind of a uh, first and stuff. Like, is there any drama going on this time already? Like, is there, is there, there's there got to be some drama. they got to get that publicity somehow, right? There has been so much whining. And just, just to bring up the core one that just kept coming up. It's going, oh no, there's a female lead character. Females cannot lead a spaceship. Hello, Voyager. Or, oh no, there's a non-Caucasian person leading a spaceship. They can't do that. Or even worse, there's a female non-Caucasian woman, uh, Michelle Yao, who accidentally speaks with an accent because that's how she speaks normally. And, oh no, we can't have that. It has to be a man, has to be white, has to be... ugh. Okay, so it's just like made-up drama then, because all that stuff doesn't really matter. <laughs> Yeah, it's it is pretty made up, uh, but one I think you might um, might join in on. As I said, it launches on CBS. The first episode launches on CBS TV channel thing, and everything else in the US launches on CBS. Do they call it all access or something? Like there's an online streaming thing. So yeah, every freaking cable. Every one of those dudes, every channel out there, they have their own streaming service. It's annoying. It's like, if we wanted to watch your channel, just for your channel, we would watch your channel. 
Don't give a stupid streaming service. Just put it on Netflix. Get it over with. Yeah, but this time, CBS decided they're releasing only, except for the first one, the rest are only on their streaming service. So if you're in the US, you don't have the streaming service, you can only watch the first episode. So what you're saying it's not going to do very well in numbers. Not in the US. Um, and Netflix is then for everything else. So the rest of the world can watch it on Netflix. So pretty much everybody behind a, like a VPN can watch it. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. It's just, oh man. On on the various nerdy forums, it's been complained about a lot. I don't imagine so. It's, it always sucks when a channel decides how you can watch their content. It tries to make you go through loops and stuff. Yeah, I made fun of um, CBS and whatnot. You know, commented about who cares about some random small TV channel in the US. And people came out and defended CBS. I mean, TV channel fanboys? That was a new one for me. I, I, I have no clue. Like I said, don't watch too much TV shows, so, I mean, I don't care about any of the channels. But, yeah, I, don't know, I mean, I guess maybe they had some shows come out on that particular channel that they really enjoyed. Or perhaps they just saw a foreigner talking about America. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's then one I think you'll be looking forward to, Punisher. I actually just saw the trailer, the, the last trailer that they put out. I gotta say, Netflix has been on, like the top shelf with the trailers here recently have you seen the trailer i saw it yeah that um it seemed messy to me i i didn't much like it but i can see how people would it's it's punisher of course it's going to be messy there's going to be guns and bullets and bodies falling and they paired it amazingly with an old metallica song called one it was it was very nice they even had like a little uh, little metallica i'm gonna kill them all phrase in there like a little line in there i saw what they did there i caught that it was nice oh uh, yeah the band with the world's worst drummer hey if you're not a metallic fan you can't make fun of lars only metallic fans can make fun of lars <laughs> i agree he's not a great drummer but i mean he's he's in a very popular band he kind of holds them together he's uh, he's kind of like the the main guy behind the scenes too oh dude you should see the lars and i come from the same country you should see news whenever anything's reported about him oh it's him possible it's unbearable it's embarrassing i don't imagine so he seems like a cool guy underneath it all but yeah like ah nah man like he's had, he's got some strong shoulders for a little dude like he, he's 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 caught some slack over the years like the whole napster thing he, he took that well but indeed the uh punisher trailer came out not long ago it looked amazing i really enjoyed it there was a date at the end of it, but they blurred it out because they're not very nice people. Yeah, and that's the thing. It uh, apparently, as we're recording, yesterday it leaked when the release date is. And it leaked that it was October 13th. Except they now come out and said, yeah, it won't be October 13th. Only sometimes 2017. They're kind of running out of time here. No, it definitely won't be in October. I, well, at least, I mean, I don't know crap about what they're going to do, but I can't see them doing it in October. Because Stranger Things comes out in October at the end. Like, you, you don't want to... I mean, I know people mostly binge. Like, they, it comes out, they watch it all that weekend. But you got to have, like, a month or so of, like, hype for your, te- for your show. And Stranger Things is going to be huge at the end of October, like 27th of October. Yeah, that one's going to be... It's, it's just going to overshadow everything else. And as I start out by saying, October is just where everything gets released. We just... All the released uh, s- series, all the renewed series, all that just, it's a flood in October. You don't want to come out in October if you can avoid it. Stranger Things is like, I got this. I'm on October 14th, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, season two. That is a horribly long title for a show. <laughs> Why did they make it so long? That's the title of the book, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. Fair enough. I would hate to see that on the TV guide, like on the channel, like the the channel guide thing. I would hate to look for that. <laughs> you would get like Dirk Gently, dot, 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 dot. Yeah, there's, uh, they just released Philip K. Dick's Electric Sheep on uh, BBC in the UK. And my wife just went, why is that show called Dick? Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. And that's, that's, the, that's an issue with long titles. On the guides, like, I don't know what the kids are going to see. 
It's got to be easy. I mean, the ninth is Supergirl. That's a nice short one. The tenth is Flash, and then Legends of Tomorrow. Sorry, it has to be said that way. And twelfth is Arrow. So, you know, comic books and very short titles. It works. Yeah, yeah. Comic books are just taking over, man. Like, the nerdy generation is just... It's like, it's our time to watch shows. Get off with your old western and stuff. It's it's the nerd time. And I like the the width that's in this thing. Like Supergirl is nice, and you know it's it's a bit fluffy and airy, and it's bright. And then Arrow at the other end is kind of dark and yeah, gritty. Flash is just always optimistic, and Legends is um, what's a positive? I think I guess say. Um, it's colorful. So it's like the people putting these shows together. They know what they're doing. It's like, oh, we got this kind of show. We need this kind of show. Oh, we got this kind of show now. Oh, we need a little something else for these people who don't like those kind of shows. It's like they know what they're doing. Yeah, and I mean, technically, Lucifer is also based on a um, on a comic book. And that one doesn't really fit the theme for the other ones. Well, I mean, it's Lucifer. What can you do? He kind of does his own thing. Kind of always has. Oh yeah, but um, let's just say there are some outfits in the other ones that are revealing in a comic booky way. There's some stuff in Lucifer that's just adult. What channel is this coming on? Because I don't think I know it. Oh, in the US, isn't that the CW? Wait, how are they putting that on there then? Is this like at like midnight when it comes on or something? Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Kids are already in bed. Cough, cough. Something like that. It's fairly late. One of those that I'm also kind of looking forward to is... Uh, once upon a time, I know it's just fairy tales and soft and cuddly and cute, but um, it's a nice little show. I like that one. Once upon a time, I think I've seen the, uh, an episode two of that on Netflix. Wasn't a very bad show. I liked it. Yeah, I think the first like four or five seasons are on there, but they are completely rebooting it. They got rid of most of the cast and just kept a few key people and redoing it like uh, the season seven is set long in the future ish and it's the kid who the character who was a kid in the original six is coming back as an adult and then telling the new fairy tale thing so it's a it's a way of letting people go and getting new fresh faces in and still having a story so essentially it's a revised edition yeah they call it a soft reboot so they, they it's like okay we have to like we have to merge these together somehow we needed a bridge from the first seasons to this season yeah i think it's just this made us too much money and we ran out of stories let's redo everything uh, yeah it's just the way it is i mean if it's good it's good people enjoy it they enjoy it that should be around so but i guess we're here also to talk a little bit of video gaming before we get into future proof which is you know all the coming games for the next month yeah i figured this would be a good segue essentially into the, the future proof where we talk about games coming up because it does have news and future proofness to it there's a game called fortnite it's a building survival type community building game they have a mode coming out called battle royal and most people think of battle royal they think of player unknown battle royal uh, apparently uh Bluehole, the developer behind PUBG, is what I'll refer to it as from now on, actually issued a press release talking about the similarities between the two games and hinted at maybe, 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 just maybe, future action, which will never happen, honestly. Hold on, so because Fortnite is making a Battle Royale-style game thing mode, Bluehole, who makes PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, PUBG, a threatening lawsuit, but PUBG is a riff on H1Z1, King of the Kill, which is a riff on Armor 2, Armor 3 mods. What's going on here? Well, I mean, essentially, I don't think they actually threatened the lawsuit, but they said there might be future action taken. There is some similar similarities between the two games. But, I mean, it's a genre of game now. It's... Games have always taken from each other. I don't know if they don't realize this or not, but they have always borrowed and stole. It's just always how it's been. This also means Bluehole went out and said, Oh, by the way, this game over there that we will be competing with is good enough to be a threat. And they just told their whole player base, 
plus potential player base that there's a free-to-play game that is good enough to threaten them. Exactly. They gave these dudes some free advertising, essentially. Like, this game is similar to our game. And it's also coming out in a few days on PlayStation 4. Our game isn't coming out until probably next year on PlayStation 4. Their game is free. Ours is going to cost probably $39.99 up to the $59.99. Theirs is free, though. <laughs> but they're similar. Don't check them out. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, it sounds like they're not just similar. They're good enough to be a threat. Yeah, I'd never heard of Blue Hole games before Battlegrounds came out, honestly. So I don't know what they did before. I don't know if they know what the crap they're doing because they definitely did give them publicity. They gave a AAA game because uh, uh, Fortnite's actually made by Epic, I want to say. So they gave a AAA developer free publicity. And PUBG sold 10 million copies. And assuming they're not all to people who've been banned for being assholes, that means about 10 million people just got advised to go play another game. Bravo. Or like it's the people who are like, oh, I want to play PUBG, I want to play PUBG. I don't have a PC. I'm going to have to wait for it to come on PS4. Those people are like, oh, I, I can just play Fortnite. Or the people who didn't want to shell out the full release game price for a game. So they're like, oh, I, I don't have to spend 60 bucks on a game. I can just play this free to play one. Another thing that came in the news not long ago, it was an accident, apparently. But you know how Xbox is always wanting crossplay between them and Sony since Sony has sold so many PlayStation 4s this generation? Well, just to be clear, they want it now, but last generation, they were the ones saying no. The reason you and I played Dust on um, on the PS3 was because Xbox did not want any crossplay at all. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's whoever's leading in sales is the one who doesn't want to give the competitor access to numbers. I got that. I got that. I kind of clarified that when I was saying it, kind of. But yeah, Xbox wants crossplay between Sony and themselves. Sony's like, nah, we're good. We're good. We got our own crew now. Apparently in Fortnite, there was some connection issues. Like, I, I did the little finger quotes, connection issues. And supposedly, well, not supposedly, but definitely people on PlayStation were playing with people on Xbox. So there was a tiny little accident that somebody flipped the switch that should not have been flipped. Exactly. Like, oops, whoopsie. <laughs> and there's videos surfaced of people from Xbox playing with people from PlayStation. And the videos I saw, which I don't know how more perfect it could be. But the first time there was crossplay between PlayStation and Xbox was cheaters people cheating in a solo game <laughs> first time crossplay shows people cheating do you know what that makes sense but it also this sounds a little bit like um what was that car racing football game that came out last year rocket league what rocket league that one it was a, a soccer game is a car racing soccer game though i think you misspoke yeah the uh, car racing football game soccer yes football that one, they came out and said, well, they could actually let people play car racing football across all the platforms and networks. They have the code done. They just need to flip a switch and, you know, it's there. So this sounds a little bit like uh, Epic were in the same position and just said, F it. Let's uh, show Sony our middle fingers. Or it was just like a, it was an easy way to get some more publicity for a game that's launching soon that too yeah well, sounds a bit like a two for there because i mean no, no harm no foul like you could just oops chalk it up to an accident oh there's an intern fired right now oh did we do that that was not at all on purpose and I'm, I'm sure somebody at sony was showed up and said please don't do that and we know why you did it and you made us look like assholes probably so there was a very strongly written email that was sent out but yeah it's weird because Sony has come out and said, oh, they're for it. They just need a, a good reason for it. So it's, come on. 
at this point is just getting stupid. Yeah, I do think all not all games should be crossplay, but like the smaller games, the ones that are going to lose the population really quick kind of thing. I think the population should be combined, yeah. Also just where it doesn't matter. A PvE game, a pure PvE game and f- ignoring battle royale thingy in Fortnite, the core gameplay in Fortnite is a PvE star thing. Yeah, it's a community game. It's like your community building, like it's cooperative. It's not competitive. And when you you have things like um, Paragon, which is also an epic game, has crossplay between the PS4 and Windows. There's no Xbox version at this point. That one, its mechanics, yes, there's still um, advantages with mouse and keyboard for the aiming, but overall, the mechanics are actually such that it's okay. And I think most MOBAs would be okay with cross-platform play. Uh, very possible. Like, as long as there's not a lot of, like, FPS-type shooting involved in the game. Precisely. Twitch shooters, no. That just doesn't work. Which, I mean, you can't really complain about Fortnite, because apparently Fortnite, like the other Epic game, supports keyboard and mouse. So you can just play with keyboard and mouse on your PlayStation or the controller. Yeah, tell me about it. I locked into Fortnite to play this Battle Royale and the stream of comments that were coming in. This is a uh, global chat and in the bottom left it was just comment after comment. I think I think a lot of PUBG players were in there cuz boy were they complaining. It's very possible, very possible. There is one negative though. Because um, on PC, Fortnite is like 60 frames a second. On console, it is locked at 30. So there is an advantage slightly to the uh, PC. But, I mean, I always heard people complaining about frames being off. But while I was playing PUBG on PC with friends, uh, every now and then people do comment about what their frames are. And they very widely, like, what are we talking? And somebody's like, oh, I got 80 frames right now. Oh, I only have 100. Oh, I got 60 in this area. And I'm looking at my frames, and I'm like, I got 140. I don't know if I want to tell them I have 140 to their 80 at the moment or not. But they're still doing well. I'm doing well. I don't think frames matter as much as people have complained about. It's a penis measuring contest, nothing else. The moment you hit 90 frames... Yes, there's a slight kinetic improvement. Yes, it might look smoother if you have a panel that can show it. But at that point, it doesn't really matter. If you're a shitty player, you're not going to do any better just because you have 140 frames per second. But yeah, that's the only... That's the negative I see that with Fortnite. 30 frames, or that's the only negative that I've seen so far, or possible negative, I guess should, I should say, is 30 frames for console, 60 for PC. I hit 28 during the Battle Royale thing in Fortnite last night. So, yeah. That's right, you actually tried it on uh, on your PC there, didn't you? Nope, I tried it on my Mac. Oh, Mac doesn't game though, right? I thought that was always the thing. When the, were you able to play anything besides Solitaire on Mac? No, Solitaire is a Windows game. We have other ones. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, you can play Solitaire on Windows. We have to settle for things like Fortnite. Ouch. Okay, well, talking about games and what's coming and... What you can play on what platforms. I think we're going to take a small break. See if we can dig up that BAM, because he's still absent. And then talk about, you know, future proof. The games that are coming out in October. You really have no reason or no excuse not to hit that subscribe button. Go ahead, do yourself a favor. Hit the subscribe button. And we're back with Future Proof. We left off in the news break talking about a future game coming out in a few days. And now we're going to get to talk about a few more games that are coming out. Because, like G mentioned earlier, October is just packed full of games. It's full of all kind of media. All kind of shows are coming out. All kind of games are coming out. I don't know what's so popular about October exactly, but it's freaking popular. Jolly, I have a problem. The rum's gone. There's no more rum. I ran out. Don't you have a wife or something? Or kids? Can't send somebody to the store real quick? You should never be out of rum. 
Oh, shit happens, mate. Ah. Oh. Anyways, yeah, you said if you were to prove. How did you run out of rum? Was it good rum, at least? No, uh, rum liquor action in this case. Oh, okay. Either way, rum is rum. But games. You may have run out of rum, but one thing you're not going to run out of is games to play in October. Yeah, I guess holiday season's coming up. So, October, November is all the big releases. Yeah, I won't, I won't lie. A lot of these games, I don't know. Because, like, I'm like a lot of people. I'm stuck on certain games. And I play them until the next game comes out for them. But a lot of these look interesting. A lot of these I've actually seen. And a lot of these I see on my friends lists being played by other people. Do you know what? I'll do you a solid then. We're going to start with one that, in my opinion, you should go out and buy for the PS4. If you didn't play it on the PS3. Dragon's Dogma Dark Horizon. Coming out October 3rd. Never heard of it, so that's the one I definitely haven't played. So it's a JRPG-styled action RPG. Um, Dragon's Dogma came out on the PlayStation 3 and I think later came out on Windows and 360. And then later there was the DLC Dark Horizon, which just adds more content and actually a lot of good content to it. It's a nice game. It For an action RPG, it's kept things quite simple, but there's an awesome little system in it where you pick up... Um, NPC characters, so there's you and then three NPCs. But when you're not playing, those NPCs leave you and go play with other players. Like, they, they are stored on a server somewhere. They get uh, You can go over to the server and pick up some of them, pick up another person's NPC character. So when you're borrowing one, that one could say, oh, I've been here before, here's some hints, here's something, uh, a warning, or some advice that you should take. You might have known the same, a similar feature at least, on Dark Souls where you could leave messages on the ground. Or, as it, they'll come back to you from somebody else and they've been given more skills and might have changed some equipment. And what you're getting is a better NPC coming back and telling you, oh yeah, I was with that guy and when he was here, those things burned him, so we should be using fire protection. Uh, fair enough, like that sounds good and all, but I don't know how I feel about my NPCs just going all over the place playing with everybody. What if I only want my NPCs to play with me? I'm protective. No idea. Um, I, I didn't actually find a way to kind of lock them down because I wasn't interested in that. It's just, I just thought it was awesome. Suddenly my NPC comes back and goes, oh yeah, be careful here because I've been here before. So I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? We haven't been here before. Who did you go here with? How, 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 how'd you get here? What are you talking about? Who you been with? So um, definitely, if, if you like action RPGs, this is a really good one. I can recommend there's an archery class that just lets you fire f ton of archer, uh, arrows. Fire archers? Yeah, why not? Bunch of arrows at a target, and that's this little uh, auto-aim feature where you go, okay, scan over, find targets on the enemy that you can shoot, and it'll shoot an arrow into all of them, and the thing dies nastily. So, um, the story is nice as well. Um, you know, there's this dragon coming along, and you're the only one who can save the place. Kind of wrote but they tell it nicely and the area is really alive and i like this effect that when you play through one of these games the areas change as you go through and kind of save them wipe out enemies etc it does sound like a good feature i could try that out indeed but i mean the first time an npc is like well so and so didn't do it this way it didn't take so and so this long to do this part of the level. Like, ah, that's gonna hurt, man. That is gonna hurt. I'm gonna be judged by an NPC. I can see it. <laughs> Another one, mostly because this was a cute little thing, um, a hat in time coming out for Windows and Mac OS on October 5th. And it, warning, this is an indie game. A little 3D platformer where you play as a little girl, you stitch hats, you make hats, you know, Mad Hatter style. And you get wicked powers out of it. You get so you know, time traveling powers, and she basically have to save the world. You know, keep it simple, right? By t traveling through space and traveling through areas, and solving things with her hats. And you know, I know it doesn't sound that exciting, but um, the Kickstarter reached about ten times the amount it targeted. They will get full modding, full Steam wor uh, Workshop support in-game screenshot mode, so they're just going all out. The people making this game are just throwing everything at it. It's a little cute it's a 3D platformer game, and it's, it, it looks really nice, but it's an indie game, so hey, it might not be on your radar, 
yeah, indie games, they can go under the radar, as you mentioned, but uh, it sounds adorable. It sounds adorable. I don't mind a good 3D platformer. I do see that Middle Earth Shadow of War is coming out October 10th on PS4 and Xbox and Windows, so it's all over the place. Oh man, I I still have not played Shadow of Mordor. It's on my wish list, on my to-do list. It's just, ah, I want to play both of them. I don't, Do I, I never it? got around to buying it. Just, yeah, sorry. So what you're doing is you're going to wait till they're like combined in a bundle and you get both of them, aren't you? I know that's what's going to be, or the third one. And then you'll get the like the trilogy. At this point, that's where it's heading at, yeah. Um, no, if I can, <laughs> I should go down and buy them. At this point, I think Shadow of War is cheap enough on its own. Uh, Shadow of Mordor, sorry, is cheap enough on its own. Um, Probably so. Since the next one's coming out, they usually do drop the price. I will say I love the ads for this game. Like uh, the ads that are talking about the Nemesis system in particular. They really improve that Nemesis system in this one. But yeah, I've seen some of the ads. They've just generally looked really awesome. Yeah, their marketing department is on like on course for being great. Very, very commercials. Well, it's Warner Brothers. It's Warner Brothers. They should know how to do this shit. Everybody should know how to do this stuff by now. But a lot of people don't put very good ads out there. And the last ad for this game I saw was very nice. I was like, huh, I actually watched it all the way through. Yeah, no, there's been some where they've shown off the uh, the characteristics, the individuality of the orcs. And I, I like it. And some of them, you know, they, they're cartoony and stupid, but, you know, it works. Yeah, I watched an ad for this game, and it was, uh, it was going through a dude's his lifetime, pretty much. And the same orc kept messing with him kept like destroying his wheelchair destroying his little boat that he retired on and just kept saying the same phrase and then at the end of the commercial it went back to when the guy who was getting tormented all these years was playing the game so long ago when he was a young individual and he said the phrase as he killed this orc and the orc looked up at the camera and it was like I'll never forget this moment. <laughs> and he didn't. He tormented that guy all through his lifetime. The Nimbus system. Amazing system in a game. Yeah, I'd like to see more of that sort of things in games. Yeah, it was a surprising mechanic. Like, didn't really think about that before. But yeah, just you kill that one NPC and he doesn't forget. Or that one NPC kills you and he lets you know it every time he kills you in the future. <laughs> Not today. Ah. Uh. Well, let's take something a little bit more simple. A nice side-scrolling shoot 'em up. I assume you're okay with those ones in a while. Yeah, yeah, they're always good. Just, just hold the trigger down and just let it go, kind of games. Yeah, THQ Nordic is uh, releasing one. Cinemora X for the PlayStation 4, X1, Nintendo Switch. So Bam can also play it, and Windows. Uh, yeah, yeah, Drac actually has something to play on that Switch now. <laughs> yeah, October 10th. So it, it's just a side scrolling, but the graphics, the style looks really nice. It's kept clean. They're not doing anything particularly fancy. Um, there's some cut scenes that are take advantage of the whole thing actually being 3D. And it's they're aiming for that arcadey feel, but also going full 60 frames per second, native 4K, local co op, you know, all those things that people will, will want to look for in a checklist of what the game has. You know, and for me, that's the local co-op. Native 4K, 6 frames per second, makes the game look nice and play nice, but mm, a nice shoot 'em up side-scroller that just can at least look clean and hopefully from the look of things also play cleanly. I'm so with that. So local co-op and Switch? I'm guessing that's going to be a really nice combo. I don't play too many more like too many local co-ops, but it seems like if like you can just take your Switch with you and like just run into a random person who may have the game and be playing out in the like the waiting room or something. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people complain that just aren't local co-op games anymore. They are. They're all over the place, and this is one of them. Just look for them. Yeah, and you just gotta buy and support the local co-op games. The games that actually support local co-op. I mean, you buy them. People make more of them. It's a surprising thing how that works. Yeah, and from us, this might be one of the games you'll see more of as we approach October 10, because um, reasons. Then one, you know, one game coming, Riskus, uh, Windows, October 10. Another one of those indie games. 
This one is, um, you know, we liked it here. Calico did a preview of it and was quite happy about it. We had Shota on the show to talk about it. So I guess not much to say except, you know, nice little top-down um, Grand Theft Auto 1-2 inspired game. And it's definitely worth checking out or check out the preview that Calico did or that episode where we had Shota on. But another big one that's finally coming out, it was delayed originally, South Park. The Fractured Butthole. Yeah, isn't there supposed to be slightly different timing? Fractured Butthole. No, otherwise it sounds like something else. What do, you, what do you mean? I have no clue what you're referring to. The uh, South Park Fractured Butthole game comes out October 17th. Uh, delayed originally, because uh, I guess it just wasn't working for him. And uh, it's a sequel to South Park, The Stick of Truth. You can choose different characters, or you can make different characters, including kind of, you know, what race your character is supposed to be. Except as you're going through the different races, the slider is referred to as a difficulty slider. Like, things get harder if you choose a black character. Yeah, I did see that the difficulty character, like the difficulty slider. Like, oh, I want to play really hard this time. And it just progressively becomes darker and darker and darker. <laughs> Very funny. There was a little bit of drama behind that. A little bit of social justice warriors coming out saying, Oh, you can't say that. And then the South Park people were like, Oh, but we can. And we did. Yeah, I, I would let that one slide. It's a funny comment. It's funny. It's a funny thing. It's funny. Just laugh, people, man. Just, just laugh. It's funny. It's a funny joke. But it turns out you can't get that nozzleless rift thingy for the smell experience. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Funny little gimmick, but no, thank, thankfully no. Yeah, I just had the whole, you know, being at Gamescom last year and just... I don't want to wear something that, on my face that people have already been wearing on their face. Like, a lot of people for the last several hours. No thank you. But yeah, South Park, the Fractured Behold game. Uh, very good game was the original, Stick of Truth. It's like playing an actual cartoon episode. Like, you could actually be involved in the cartoon episode. Coming out for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Windows. Another one I'm looking forward to. Like, this is one of the games that I probably will, will actually end up buying myself. Gran Turismo Sport. That's right. Jolly Roger has just said he's going to buy a racing game, a race car game. I'm, I'm going to buy it. It comes out October 17th on PS4. And the reason I'm buying it is because it's compatible with the PlayStation VR. Do you know what? I would agree. Even if I, I like driving car, uh, games, you know, they're fun. But even if not, I would probably go for this one because of the PSVR. It works. It works really well. I played like the demo or whatever it was a while back. And it's, it's fun. Like I haven't done too many racing games. Like I want to say the last actual racing games I bought was San Francisco Rush in 64 so it's been a while it's been a while with this one i was like man this works really well really well in the psvr and i was like ah, i wouldn't mind having like one of the steering wheels to play with this like little foot pedals and all that stuff because it's just fun it looks really good it plays really smoothly i don't get motion sick and some people have complained about that but i it didn't bother me one bit yeah, and this one they've really gone for the visuals. Like, again, 4K, 60 frames per second, uh, HDR, and wide color. So it's supposed to look as realistic or as good as they can make it look before anything else. But also, all the stats and all the details they put into it. And things like uh, apparently you will hear it if there's uh, vibrations coming up through the steering wheel virtually in the game. Um, all these little details are just being kept in. There, yo, Gran Turismo has never been a game about looking boring. It's been about good visuals, good driving controls. But this time they seem to have gone even further. So I'm looking forward to it. October 17th is definitely a game I'm going to buy. Like I, I don't play too many games on PSVR, but that's going to be one that I'm actually gonna I'm gonna sit with the PSVR a little bit. I usually play on the Vive. I would say though, there's a lot of pre-order options, a lot of packages, a lot of, you know, buy this version or that version or the limited or the something else version. The only physical change is that one of them has a steel box option. Everything else is just digital content. I think these days they could do better. There's just so many options for things to put into them, like little uh, cars, little 
die-cast vehicles, stuff that could be fun, but nope. Yeah, they should definitely go the route of Call of Duty. Like, Call of Duty will put a droid in a fucking a specialty box. Like, there's so many cars and stuff you could actually put in Gran Turismo box. You could have, like, the little little smelly things that hang on the the window, like the mirror and stuff. Like, it's just small stuff. Stickers could be put in there. I'm not going to buy any of that crap, though. I'm just going to stick with the standard edition because I had fun with the demo. So I'm definitely not needing, like, some skins for my cars. Yeah, I think it's specialty cars that are the, the big draw. People who are really into a brand of some sort will get, you know, excited to buy the option that has their car in it. Me? Meh. Ah, screw that, man. Give me a Volvo. I'll go around the track. <laughs> uh, well, something slightly different from, uh, from driving cars. Dungeons 3, and this might just be me. I like Dungeon Keeper-style games. Um, War for the Overworld was one that I looked at when that came out. There's a little coverage of it. And uh, it seems to be coming back, that whole Dungeon Keeper-style would, you know, make a base underground and put up defenses or invade somebody else's dungeon. And this time they it might be me. Visually it seems to have a fair bit of Warcraft in it. No, they they seem to have gone that way in the latest version. But this game this time is coming out on the PS4, Xbox One, Windows, Mac OS and Linux on October 17th. So if nothing else, if you're on one of those odd platforms like me, Mac OS in my case, Linux in the past. Yeah, games for Linux, mate. Linux. I'm surprising Lennox. Figured he would have led with that. <laughs> and here's the weird part. This isn't some random indie developer who just clicked the Linux checkbox in uh, Unity. This is THQ Nordic coming out with this game. So it's nice to see somebody. It's not one of the biggest publishers, but no, it's not a small one either. Going that route is, is nice that they're doing it. If nothing else, Buy the game because it's out on Linux. Yeah, support Linux. I want to say, isn't Linux like the, the most popular it's ever been? Like, isn't it finally getting a little bit more attention? Still a very small fraction, but still. I think in one survey recently, it hit 3% of desktop usage. I mean, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Tiny, but still. But yeah, support Linux if you actually want to play games on your Linux machine. So, and as a Dungeon 3, it's just the style. I like these kind of games. I think they're fun. Um, there's humor in them. They they can make me laugh while, have, while playing the game. It's good. All right, so we flipped a coin on this next game called uh, Elix is what I'm going to go out on a limb. I may fall off this limb, but Drac is going to catch me because he's the one that mentioned this game originally. And he didn't tell me how to pronounce it. So Elix, as of what I'm hoping it's pronounced, comes out on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Windows October 17th. It's an RPG. Not really my kind of game, but still, a lot of people like them. Post-apocalyptic science fantasy universe with dinos. Like, how many different genres of, like stuff can you throw at something? Yeah, um... This science fantasy, normally that's one of the things that I get a little bit wary about, but this one looks like they're doing it okay. Like, you have to get this weird substance that gives you fantasy-like powers, and uh, that's probably where they get the science fantasy from. And then the whole game is about you deciding whether to use it or not, because it takes away human emotion. You become like a robot or Spock or something, you know. So it's it's this there's an idea in the game that you have to go through this post-apocalyptic world and make a choice as to whether you want to be powerful or actually stay human. Very nice. Yeah, I, I like the underlying like story there. The more you use the power, the less human you are. I like that. The games are trying to like try try a little something a little deeper. Yeah, and it, visually it it's different, but um, there was something in the description that the devs gave out that it, it, slight Fallout-ish scenarios, except for the dinos instead of um, oh, what were those huge things with claws that like to tear your face off? Which you would know because you don't play RPGs. Yeah, I was gonna say, man, I'm, I'm, I can't help you here. Are you talking about a dino here? Death claws. That's the name. 
No, Fallout 4 had uh, death claws in it. It's kind of like dinos. Oh, gotcha. I played Fallout a little bit. I played, played a little bit. Those are the guys I always stood on top of the towers and shot down at because it was too tall for them to get me. Anyway, next game, Let's Sing 2018. That singing game, apparently. Comes out on PlayStation 4 and Wii. No Wii U because oh, it still plays on a Wii U. October 20th. Why would they come out on Wii if not Wii U? Well, how many Wii U's did they sell? How many Wii's did they sell? Uh, 100 million Wii's, a million U's, I don't know. I, I kind of guess that's your reason right there. And then later on, I think there'll be a Switch version. So this was me, you know, Bam's supposed to do these segments and he didn't show up. Um, but he also hadn't prepared anything. So I kind of just went, oh, let's put some games in here and see which ones we can annoy him with. So there's Let's Sing 2018. And then later on, four days later, there's Sing Star Celebrations. You know, singing games, karaoke games, but... Singing games on your console. I will say, I actually know an individual who plays Sing Star. I don't know if it's Sing Star, like which year it is, but uh, this comes out on PS4, Sing Star Celebration, October 24th. And yeah, I have. There's an individual I play games with who actually plays SingStar. He says he doesn't play SingStar, but PlayStation lets you know what games people are playing while they're playing them. He's always blamed his daughter. Like this is a uh, this is a deep voiced um deep voiced a uh, black guy, and uh, he's over here. He's playing SingStar. He says he's not, but he's definitely playing SingStar. Dude, um, I looked at these two games, just, you know, if I was going to throw them at BAM, I might as well prepare a little bit myself. There's some differences between them, but I think uh, Let's Sing has some songs that, frankly, if, if I have a copy, I will be belting out uh, Seven Years by Lucas Graham. Just, I can't sing, I'll admit that I'll terrify my neighbors if I did. But yeah, I think that some of them that I would sing along to. And hey, karaoke games belong on consoles. So like Sing Star Celebration and Let's Sing 2018 are kind of like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, but singing? A little bit, yeah. I got the impression Sing Star, mm, it's more pop dance music and some of them are slightly older. Oh, even better. Now that I know this guy is playing pop or singing pop and stuff, it's even better. <laughs> but, um... Here's the stupid part. Let's Sing and Sing Star, they're not new games. These are just the latest iteration. But if you have them on the PS3 or something, you can't get your old songs that you bought to work in these new versions. They're not compatible. Yay. That's called licensing. They license the songs for that and not for this. It just makes total sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I understand the monetary side of it. It's still bullshit. Uh, no. I mean, it, it. I think Guitar Hero and Rock Band had the same issues going on. Eventually, they got it worked out, and it was called More Money. Yeah, um, Singstar, I think uh, the old version just lost all its songs like a year ago, like October last year, all of them just disappeared more or less because licenses ran out. They're, both of them are coming out with 30 songs. It was a little bit too little. So you know there's somebody out there who is like refuses to connect their their console to the internet because they don't want to lose their songs <laughs> something like that yeah but at least you know let's sing has a four player option so oh i've got a couple of daughters they have friends i think it could make for a nice evening for them are you gonna like leave the household or something because that could sound really bad i would imagine oh i'm gonna leave them with their mom definitely <laughs> ah Another game on the list, Assassin's Creed Origins, PS4, Xbox One, Windows, October 27th. It's the 10th game, the 10th Assassin's Creed game. Do you know what? That's the only thing I have to comment as well. Like, it's the 10th one. Come on. How are they still making these? I guess because of the movie tie-in, or the movie tie-ins now, so it's kind of it's pretty much guaranteed that they're going to be putting out more. Yeah, a friend of mine kept playing them probably till, still does i haven't seen him in ages just i i couldn't get into them i i could not get excited um at one of the games comes a few years back i was offered you know go in and play and stuff i just looked and went eh. 
I want to say this one looked good. Like, I recall back at E3 watching a playthrough with the developers and, like, the interviewer. And it looked beautiful. It looked like a beautiful game. It's just, this is the 10th one. You can do something else. I think it, if there's a reason to play this one, they've changed the combat a little bit. Like, it's no longer walk up to somebody, press circle, then X, then circle, then triangle, then, you know. This time, it's you swing a sword and there's a hitbox and there's some more real-time combat effect. Um, I'd almost call it quick-timey, the, uh, the combat style in the old one. People are going to hate that. People are going to complain. It's not quick-time, but it's quick-timey. Now they've changed it so it's more direct effect. That, that might be reason to play it, but still. Indeed, 10th game looks beautiful. Another game... Or another franchise, I should say. It's been around forever. Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. PS4, Xbox One, and Windows, October 27th. It's the eighth one. Wolfenstein. And you said something along the lines of the story is actually getting kind of kind of good. It's, it's only taking them eight games, but the story is getting kind of good. Yeah, this time I think um, it, I might have been missing something in the years in between the original Castle Wolfenstein and this one. But now, you know, it's this 1961 Nazi-occupied America. Wait, don't you have Nazis today? Oh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, we punch them in the face. Yeah, I've heard about that. So it's this alternative history thing. And it might be me. I like that kind of setting, like uh, Resistance, Fall of Man, you remember that one. Also had this alternative history thing. And the way that they can play with it, if they do the stories right... And the trailers, the material that's coming out of Bethesda and ID on this really looks interesting. So it's a Wolfenstein game. It's an ID soft game. It's, you know, <laughs> let, let's be honest. It's one of those games where it, the shooting part is the important part. But this time, I think the story might just be worth actually paying attention to. And can we just you know, appreciate it? It took these guys 30 years to get to eight versions. It took Assassin's Creed. What, 10 years to get to 10 versions? Yeah, yeah, that's just kind of how it goes. And so it comes out on Switch 2018, so another game for Drac to play with Bam. He's up to three of them, yay! Okay, should we round this up with just a little tiny indie title? Yeah, a little cherry on top of the Sunday. Or I, I guess, I, could we call it a Saturday? Because, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. So, Grave Ball, coming out October 31st. On Windows only, unfortunately. It's an odd little game. It's a sports game. Uh, we actually had a couple of them on our list that we kind of skipped, but this one we won't skip. It's a uh, three characters, three aside uh, game where you play as little orcs, goblins. I think it's goblins in a graveyard. So you have three goblins, the enemy has three goblins. And the goal is to get a skull into the other side's goal. It must stay there for two seconds. Or if that doesn't work, you can just kill their goblins and they turn into ghosts. That's always the go-to right there, man. Just knock the other players out of the competition. Easy easy win. Easy win. Yeah, I, I, it feels a little bit like a simpler speedball-ish kind of game. Um, it's probably the best way I can describe it. And it's, it has competitive modes and it has the option of playing online competitive. As well as local co-op, which is one of those things you keep saying. And it's an indie game. It deserves a little bit more attention. It's not the prettiest one. It's not the most immediately appealing, but this one looks like a pretty decent one, actually. So um, check it out. Great ball. And that wraps up the games for this Future Proof. It was amazing talking to you guys once again. This was Jolly. We'll catch you next time. Have a good one. Ciao.